Tom. Yes. Uh, I'm going in to sign papers tomorrow morning around 11. Do you want to go along? Uh, I won't be able to do that. All right, then you'll have to make other arrangements. Yes, I will. Okay. Yeah, I got to go an hour later. I got to do something for 10. Commissioner Warren, one thing I noticed, uh, I logged on a little early today before the host started the meeting. And when she started the meeting, I was just sitting in a timeout. So I found that if I logged back out and went back in, it, it pulled me right into the meeting. So I'm just throwing that out there in case somebody has a problem getting in. Maybe refreshing the screen is probably the, the solution. If anybody sees attorney gross jump in, could you please let me know? <clears throat> um, yes, it's Larissa. Do you know, do you have a time tomorrow that would work for you? Uh, I, at this moment. Right now, I can't tell you, I know that at 11, it that's going to be like the most unable time okay probably probably around 9 30 10 in there um i have a i have a an appointment um i don't i'm hoping to be there by 10 but i'm not um, oh okay 100 percent sure but will you be in any afternoon then yep okay i'll yes. i'll try for after I get done with what I'm doing after a Okay. Okay. Hey, you, you know what too, Melissa, can, oh. can you tell the guys that, uh, when they deliver the package, you have to keep it out of the ring. I mean, it wasn't as bad this past Friday as it was the Friday before. I mean, it didn't dry out for two days. This one here, it, it just took overnight, Wait. but you know, they can put it in the, the paper mailbox or whatever, you know, but just throwing it on the on the stoop there doesn't protect it too much. Gotcha. Okay, it's seven o'clock. I'd like to call to order the June 14th, 2021 public meeting of the Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners. Uh, first, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag, followed by a moment of thanks for members of the armed forces, especially those in harm's way. First responders, healthcare workers, food supply workers, our municipal staff and employees who are helping our community and country through these trying times. Let us begin with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, 
indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Now the HUD statement. Whitehall Township has an obligation to affirmatively further fair housing and to review all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. This includes taking meaningful actions that overcome patterns of segregation, foster inclusive communities free from barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. The township in its land use decisions does not discriminate against persons based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, disability, or familial status, and reviews all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. Public comments made on the basis of bias and stereotype concerning people within these protected classes will not be taken into consideration by the township in its deliberations. Okay, uh, first will be the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. Do we have a second? I'll move, Fisher. Comments from the board? Comments from the public? No comments from the public. There being none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Atia? Yes. Commissioner D? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Marks? Yes. And President Ginder? Yes. Motion passes seven ayes, zero nays. All right, the conditional use that was on the agenda for the night has been pulled by the developer for tonight, and we will possibly see it into the future. Uh, courtesy of the floor. Is there anybody for courtesy of the floor? We have Joseph Del Frio for the Copland Creek. Does he want to talk now, or does he want to wait till that uh, comes up in front of us? Joseph, you're now unmuted. No, okay. I'll wait. I just wanted last time I was on, nobody recognized my unmute message. So I wanted to make sure I can respond to any of your questions. So I'm requesting the host to unmute me when you talk about Coplay Creek. Okay. Anybody else for courtesy of the floor, Melissa? Oh, there's no other comments. All right, moving on, public hearing and voting on ordinances. Bill number 11, 2021, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the Copley Creek Stream Bank Restoration Project Erosion and Sedimentation Control Plan for the Public Works Bureau of the Township of Whitehall in accordance with Section 3.20 of the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? Make that motion, Warren. Do I have a second? I'll second, Marks. Comment from the board. Yeah, this is uh, Commissioner Warren. Um, just want to verify, this is the project uh, on the limits of the Mickley Pryden farm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, um, I did talk to John Rackus early in the development of this, and uh, we discussed about some flexibility in the plantings. Um, I did did not want to see all the public access be eliminated from from the creek, uh, particularly around the bridge. I mean, people do walk that area. I I, I support the uh, enhancements to the riparian buffer, but I don't want to make it a physical barrier for the entire corridor if we if we can avoid that. And I also did talk to him about where we plant trees versus bushes. It wasn't, um, it didn't, it didn't, wasn't unique on the map because it used the same symbols. And I prefer more bushes around that bridge as opposed to trees just with the view, but that's all I have. Any other comments from the board? Comments from the public. Does that gentleman wish to speak? 
No, the um, Joe D'Onofrio here with AEG. We could have rearranged some of them plants, the lower statue plants along the bridge area. But at the same time, most of them plants were specific, not only to the riparian buffer ordinance provided by the state, but also to comply with your MS4 program permits that you're going after. So we'll, we, they can be managed to a certain extent. That's all I have to say. Any other comments from the public? Thank you for your comments. Any other uh, comments from the and your work on this, sir? Any Thank other you. comments from the public? Yes, we have a comment from Lori Ann Fainel. It says, just a statement. I want to make sure the mayor gives a public apology for getting the missing the 26th annual retirement of the American flag at Hokie American Legion. And number two, we need a paid fire department. Yeah. Well, th this isn't the time, but they're they're there now. We're in the middle of this bill. Okay. Any other comments on bill number eleven from the public? No, there are no other comments. Okay. I the only comment I wish to make on this, I want to thank John Rackus. I know John's put an awful lot of time into this and this this sedimentation control uh, plan and everything else, John has been carrying the weight on for a couple of years now, and, and I'm sure that's not an easy task. All right, any other comments from the board on this? If not, Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner Slonaker? Aye. Commissioner D? Aye. Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. And President Ginder. Yes. Bill passes seven ayes, zero nays. Bill number 18, 2021, an ordinance amending the term of existence of the White Hall Township Industrial and Commercial Development Authority for additional period of time expiring on December 31st in the year of 2070 to enable the continuation of its mission and to enable long-term financing to carry out its stated goals. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion, D. Do I have a second? I'll make that motion, Fisher. Comments from the board. Any comments from the board? Comments from the public on this bill? There are no comments from the public. There being none, Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner D. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Atia, yes. Commissioner Marks, yes. President Ginder, yes. Bill passes seven ayes, zero nays. Bill number 19, 2021, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the payment Preservation Work, Bid 2021-06 for the Public Works Bureau in accordance with Section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Fisher. Do I have a second? Second, Sloniker. Questions from the board? Any questions from the board? Questions from the public? There are no comments from the public. There being none, Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner aye. Warren? Aye. Commissioner Atia.
Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner D. Aye. President Ginder. Yes. Bill passes seven ayes, zero nays. Public hearing and voting on resolutions. Resolution number 3161. A resolution for sewage facilities plan revision for new land development of Dennis Mikofsky, 4724 Huffman Drive, Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Mark. Do we have a second? Was that you, Randy? Yes. Comments from the board. Comments from the public. There are no comments from the public. There being none. Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner Marks. Yes. Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner D. Aye. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. President Ginder. Yes. Resolution passes seven ayes, zero nays. Resolution number 3162. Was somebody talking? No. Okay. Resolution number 3162, a resolution of the Township of Whitehall, Leite County, requesting a grant from the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Financing Authority's Greenways, Trails and Recreation Program for the Ironton Rail Trail Trailhead Improvement Project. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion, D. Do I have a second? I'll second, Fisher. Comments from the board? Comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. There being none, Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner D. Aye. Mr. Fisher. Aye. Mr. Atia. Yes. Mr. Sloniker. Aye. Commissioner Warren. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Marks? Yes. President Ginder? Yes. Resolution passes seven ayes, zero nays. Resolution number 3163, a resolution of the Township of Whitehall, Lee County, requesting a grant from the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Financing Authority's Watershed Restoration and Protection Program for the Copley Creek Stream Bank Restoration Project. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion, D. Swanaker was first, then D. Comments from the board? Yes, can we have this area location identified where this work is to be done? Joe D'Onofrio here, it's, uh, it, it's between South, oh, it's difficult to describe the actual location. It's between a bridge on South Roll, Roll Street or the Roll. Iron. Roll. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Joe, this is John. It's it's along the Pride Farm. It's for that one. Oh, okay. So, um, tonight. yeah. Okay, great. Um, because you know, I guess we can't put shovel in the ground until we hear a plus up whether this grant is awarded. No, we have it budgeted for. It's in the general. Right. It's in our capital budget, but the grant. Right. But the grant can offset. That. The grant yeah. can off once we have once we build build it. Um, the grant. I don't know if I don't know if we can still qualify for the grant once the project has been completed. So Joe, um, it's Joe D'Onofrio here. The grant is for basically ninety nine percent of it's for construction, and when you the grant is here open period is from like late October to the last part of May. 
uh, we submitted the grant for the construction costs. Great, great. And the grant total so far is one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars and and seven point one hundred and twenty nine seven hundred dollars. It just uh, hopefully you understood me. The township's responsibility would be nineteen four hundred and fifty five dollars of that grant. But you also can get reimbursed for 10% of the engineering costs and 2% of the administrative costs. So in that total, you're looking at a grant of around $130,000, $130,700. And of that, you only owe $19,605, which is approximately 400 or $250 difference for just the construction grant alone, but you make more money. I shouldn't say you make more money, but you get more money for the project in the end. But we won't know the final figures until er the administration fees are all known and the engineering fees are all finished up. But I assume the engineering return, let's say on the $129,700 is going to be about $12,900. And I assume, because I just don't know, $1,000 for your admit fee. That's how you get a total grant of approximately $130,000 and $130,000 in some change. I guess my, I guess my comment was is that some of the grants work that if you complete the project and have a grant in limbo and it's not awarded, you kind of forfeit the grant. And as long as those I's are dotted and T's are crossed and the awarding agency allows us to proceed with the project before the grant decisions made, I'm, I'm fully supportive of that. Um, that, I, I was, okay, go ahead. I'll let that you was, that was my question. I'm supporting of the grant and the amount. I'm just, if the we put shovel in the wheat ground this week or next next week, does that disqualify us from the grant where pen, that's pending? It does not disqualify us from the grant at all, because number one, they're assuming you're going to start this grant, this construction work with or without the grant. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for clearing that up. Any other comments from the commissioners? Comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner D. Aye. Commissioner Atia. Yes. Commissioner Marks. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. President Ginder. Yes. Resolution passes seven ayes, zero nays. Resolution number 3164, a resolution approving the stipulation of settlement by and between J.C. Penny Properties Incorporated and the Lehigh County Board of Assessment Appeals, Lehigh County, the Whitehall Copley School District and Whitehall Township. Do I have a motion? Monaker. We have, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mark. Comments from the board. Comments from the public. There are no comments from the public. There being none, Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Swanaker, aye. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner D? Aye. Commissioner Atia? Yes. And, and President Ginder? Yes. Resolution passes seven ayes, zero nays. Before we get to the reports of public officials, under other, there's a motion. Are there any motions out there or discussion items that you wish to be brought forward at this time before we get to the report of the public officials? 
There being none on the reports of public officials. Uh, let's start with Commissioner B. Thank you, President Ginder. Um, I'm going to uh, bring up something that happened a while ago. I just forgot to mention it at the last couple meetings. Uh, back on April 24th, it was uh, National Drug Take Back Day. And uh, statewide in the state of Pennsylvania, we collected 35,206 pounds of old and unused prescription medication and over the counter medication, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I talked to Chief Marks and he says that the response here in Whitehall was, was overwhelming. Their box was, was stuffed. So I'd like to thank all the members of the public who participated. Uh, it's, a, it's a great program if everybody tends to have uh, leftover prescription drugs, even over the counter medication they don't use. Uh, don't dump it in your toilet. Don't throw it away. This is a great opportunity to uh, turn it back in and it'll be properly disposed of. Uh, the uh, DEA is going to have another drug to take but national drug take back day on October 23rd. So it's just if you have unused medication, it's a great way to properly get rid of it. Um, as always, I'm going to bring up the White Oak Copley Hunger Initiative. Because on Wednesday, June, this Wednesday, they will start the new children's summer feeding program, which will bring food into six different drop and go locations, one in Copley and five here in Whitehall, with the goal of feeding a minimum of 500 food and secure children and babies, children through age 18. It's a great program. Again, hats off to Sherry Nocturne and everything she does with the White Oak Copley Hunger Initiative. Uh, last Thursday, their pantry served 115 households in the White Oak Copley School District, 156 adults, 96 children, 81 seniors for a total of 333 people. Uh, they just do phenomenal work. Again, if you would like to donate some items, uh, they're looking for fruit and cream oatmeal packets, uh, four packs of fruit cups, nor packets, rice or noodles, famous Amos cookies. They can be dropped off at the Remax building at 1080 Shot Avenue. It's a great program when you're out shopping again, pick up one or two extra items to donate. We're coming out of the COVID era, but there's still a lot of people who are hurting out there. Money's tight. Uh, unemployment, unfortunately, we uh, the state put in a new unemployment compensation system, but still has had a lot of glitches. Still a lot of people are not getting their unemployment checks. Still a lot of hurting people out there. So again, hats off to the White Oak Copley Hunger Initiative. Uh, for all the fantastic work they are doing. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Commissioner Fisher. Uh, thank you, President Ginder. So a few quick things um, kind of to uh, parrot a little bit about what Commissioner D said. Uh, you know, we're still just coming off of COVID right now. Um, my big thing, I've been banging the drum, get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. Um, I, I trust the vaccine a lot. It's doing really great. Um, at work, we have finally stopped wearing masks. It's wonderful. I am doing out. I'm doing. Uh, we've done a few indoor dining things. It's it's great. I mean, it really feels like you know, it's summertime, but it feels like springtime. You know, I, I really, really want to emphasize again, just everyone, please, please, please get the vaccine. Um, children still can't get it, but it's something we really, really need to get done. And I just want to read some really quick numbers here that I think would be of a lot of interest. Um, yesterday, just yesterday in Lehigh County, uh, we had five cases of coronavirus. The seven day moving average is 11. Um, before that, it was like 10. Before that, it was like 16. We are doing great. Um, so just please, please, please get it. Because the last thing I want to say on that note, there is still some concern in the world about how the vax about where the vaccine's going. If you check cases in the United Kingdom uh, over the last month, they're actually going up from like 1,000 to like 7,000 cases per day. And I think a lot of that could be the so-called Delta variant, that uh, variant out of India. So, um, you know, this isn't over yet. So if you're not vaccinated now, please, please do so. Um, the only other two things I want to say is, um, you know, we're always looking for volunteers with different uh, groups and commissions in the township. Um, I, I know it was mentioned how you know Camp Whitehall did 
can't open this year because of a lack of volunteers. And I just saw that the summer camp where I worked at uh, is having trouble too because they can't find volunteers. So please, volunteers, or if you have like youths, who are looking for volunteers. And the absolute last thing I want to say is a big thank you to um, the Envi to the Whitehall Environmental Advisory Commission. We had a great cleanup on May 15th down on Jordan Parkway, right next to Home Depot. Um, we got some great pictures of it up on Facebook and that were posted in the Whitehall Copley Press. We hauled out a lot of trash. Um, thank you to everyone. There's another cleanup coming up on June 19th. Please stay tuned. Uh, that will be advertised on the uh, EAC Facebook page. So thank you again. So that's all I have. And I'll turn it back over to uh, President Ginder. Thanks, Joel. Uh, Commissioner Atia. Thanks, Bill. I don't have a whole lot. I, I did want to ask. Um, I know that we, a while back, we had met with the school district. I believe it was the mayor, myself, um, Bill and Tom, but the new superintendent at the school district, I thought it would be a good time for us to uh, maybe get that going again and, and meet with the school district superintendent. You're, you're, you're cutting out. At least I'm having trouble hearing you, Randy. Bill, it, it's not I can send you an email. It's nothing important. No, it's important. Uh, I think you were talking about getting together with the school district again. I know the mayor, Mayor Mike, Mike, do, do you want to comment on this? I know you just had a meeting with the new superintendent. I, I did have a meeting with uh, Dr. Steckel. Um, for those of you who, who know the name Steckel and Robert Steckel, um, he he is unrelated to uh, to that group of steckles. That's a question he gets constantly. Um, but yes, we we had a, a good hour hour and a half meeting. Uh, we we uh, believe both of us. I'm sure that we're going to have a a good relationship, uh, and we want to extend that to both boards also. Um, I, I, at when when he settles in, uh, we'll be setting up some meetings um, maybe with a, a group of three with uh, your board if you'd like that phil um, to talk through um, common elements that we think we can work on together um, he he did a, a really good job of understanding a lot of what's happening in whitehall in the short time that he's been around and i'm looking forward to working with him yeah, we, we, we do have a committee together for that on, on the board and, you know, I, I believe we should further. You know, and, and you know, we, we, we have to work with each other. I mean, right. We can't ignore each other and that would be completely wrong for the community. So I think we need to work together and for and find joint things that that uh, favor both of us. Uh, did that answer your question, Randy? Yep, that, that's fine. So I just wanted to kind of put that back on the radar for us to be able to meet with the new superintendent. I think that would be great. No, I'm glad you brought that up. Do you have anything else you want to go through? One one last thing, I, if you guys can hear me okay, I just wanted to um, thank Chief Marks. Um, there was a mental health issue um, that came up and a resident of the township um, <laughs> lost his life and and chief marks really went above and beyond in meeting with the family um i know the family it's it's a family friend of past and chief marks you know just went above and beyond in terms of meeting with the family answering questions um went as far as to sitting in the living room with them and, and helping them to grieve so just wanted to thank him for all he does okay anything else randy Oh, that's all, Phil. All right, thanks. Commissioner Warren. Yeah, if you, uh, I just want to follow up on the announcement that we, Whitehall Township was awarded $59,634 to begin the restoration of the Mickley Pride and Farm. Um, was a long, long, hard wait. Um, this, the, this amount of money probably covers phase one, the building envelope that we've all been hoping for, or most of us have. Um, I've been encouraged to apply again. It was a tough year for this grant program given the pandemic, but the state was confident in our project and, and did give us a, a nice award. Um, I wanna thank Senator Boscola and her office 
uh, Jeannie McNeil and her office and, and McD for keeping us in the loop on, on the status of the grant program. And uh, I've been talking with the mayor about um, possible members to support a committee, and I, I think he'll talk more about that. Um, so spearhead the restoration of the, the farm. Um, the only other thing I have is uh, the status of the Mc Mechanicsville sidewalk. Or did we get it? The final signatures on that schools out. We're in prime construction season. I'm hoping we can get this project done before the beginning of the next school year. So do I Jeff um, right now we're just waiting for, I think, 1 or 2 more signatures and then we can move on from there. So we're putting the pressure on in that regard to get that get those on They're remote folks they are not from around here. So I don't know if there's any issues with coordination, but I've. Uh, been keeping in contact with uh, our attorney on that one, but everything else is ready to go. It's going to take some time to get it out to bid and then get to shovel in the ground. And I don't want us to be in the way of buses come mid August if we can avoid it. I, I, I right, agree. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear anything else. That's it. Thank you. I have a question on this grant and uh, what's going on down at the Pride Farm. I was I was under the impression from a year ago that there was going to be a committee formed to see just how far to go down there. And now I We're see we got a grant. When what comes first? We don't, chicken even know if, we don't even know if we're saving that big house or not. Was the last I heard. Uh, the, vote, the board voted on it. Um, we're spearheading. I don't the board voting on it. Voted to apply for this grant. The majority of the board spoke. I, and, I'm uh, the grant uh, to do the garden and, and things down there. In order to apply for this grant, we had to pass a board resolution that passed with a majority vote. When was that? Um, I can pull up the grant. Is it possible? I think what we got to start doing here is. The board, when grants are applied for, the board of commissioners each should get a copy of, of the grant that's applied for. Uh, it's like every we're running in all different directions, writing grants out here, and, and you know we don't know if we're going to come up with the money for our share of some of these grants. Well, uh, all I can all I can say is we passed a board resolution. Um, um, it was I'll call the majority the board. Tomorrow. I, I want to see a copy of this, but but where I'm lost is who's making the decisions here as to what we're going to do with this Biden farm. The um the pre well, feasibility I was last I knew it was all over the place. That's a nice state. That's a nice statement. But um, what I can tell you is that we did no, have the feasibility. What's wrong? What's wrong with that statement? Well, what is wrong we with didn't... that statement? Don't be curt right. with me. If there's a problem with the statement, let's get it out in the open. If there isn't, don't make an ass out of me. I'll tell you that right now. Let me answer the question. We did a feasibility, the mayor spearheaded a feasibility study and this feasibility study laid out a step-by-step -step plan to do restoration. In the grant process, we laid out the framework of that, that feasibility study and phase one is what they awarded. Which is the building envelope, the spouting, the spouting could have been tacked up 6 years ago and it wasn't so that would that leads to more damage, but. Um, what comes 1st, the chicken or the egg, the grant or the committee and so with COVID, we really didn't have a, a meeting. The mayor and I communicated, we communicated with people offline. Um, but we did lay, uh, we worked with uh, Chad Helmer to submit a grant application. We passed a board resolution in favor of the grant application. The board members spoke in favor. Most of the board members spoke in favor of it. And, uh, you know, we're getting, we're making progress. I think if you ask the resident of Whitehall Township, if they prefer more development or a protection of open space, I think they go with the latter. Uh, open I, space is one thing, throwing money against old houses, that's a different thing. That's not open space, that's throwing money against old buildings. That same thing was said about the grist mill. We, we toured the, uh, the barn, the Leonard barn. 
Some people said, how did we end up with these things? It's now the home of a recreation department. So there's value in this stuff. I, I, I understand and everybody has a perceived different value. That's why I was under the impression before any money was gonna be spent down there, there was gonna be a proper committee. And by proper, I mean, not all yes people, people with different ideas and then go forward with what this decision is to do down there because there is interest in preserving just the little house, not the big house, which has no historical value. The little house is the historical value, which I do not wish to debate at this point. So I'm, I'm just curious what, what's going on down there and, and that this doesn't turn into a one or two or three person make all the decisions down there. Moving forward. Anything else, Commissioner Warren? No, I was just trying to find the resolution number that we passed, and it looks like it was resolution 3137. Yeah, the date on that. It was signed October 13th. You signed it as did Miss as uh, Tom Sloniker and Mayor Harrigle. Okay. But what I'll talk about that later. Any other comments, Commissioner Warren? No, but we 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 do a lot of spending spending proposals. This actually has some state financing behind it. They support it, and uh, I think we should proceed. I think the majority of commissioners agree with that. I hope. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Sloniger. <clears throat> okay, uh, getting back with tying in with the Mechanicsville Road. Uh, the sidewalks and all that. I'm still trying to find out if Frank, if you have had any communication with the state on going ahead and elongating the turning uh, lane right there in front of the Wawa. It's it's worse every day. It, it appears. Are you there? Right. He's muted. Oh, well, okay. Melissa, <laughs> can you unmute Frank? There we go. Him? There we go. No, no, a different screen popped up on me. Um, no, Tom, to answer your question about the uh, lane on the Wawa, in front of the Wawa, the left-hand turn lane, we have been working with PennDOT and their, um, their people who are assigned to uh, spearhead the restaurant, the restaurant, the resurfacing of 145. And we had a, actually had a, a virtual meeting with them probably about six weeks ago. We laid out not only that um, turn lane, but the inlets in front of the Taco Bell. We, we talked about a number of things, um, but the um, need of actual curbing where the old um, blockbuster used to be there by Salad Works. We, we gave them a whole list of things to do. Mayor, I don't know if you ever heard back from any of those folks or not, but I know I didn't. I did not either. Yeah. So that's those, all those issues have been raised, Tom, and more. And we, you know, we hear crickets. And, and again, that's it's nothing happens unless we bring it up. Yeah. And also on the flip side of that, I want to go ahead and thank you for getting the <laughs> turn lane in front of the auto zone. <laughs> Well, it took them a while to finished get that it. paving done, but they finally it, finished it. Yeah. It don't look yeah, I'm very happy about that. And <laughs> also, I want to go ahead and give many, many, many thanks to uh, Jack Myers, Debbie Bowman, and oh, now I'm forgetting the name. Oh, I should be shot. Uh, Oh, and Chief Marks. Chief Marks didn't fit into the thing there on getting the application or whatever it is so that we would receive the money from the uh, monies that were due us. And I know that uh, when I talked to the individuals there that they they were on top of it, not as many people in the county were uh, ready to go as we are. And uh, it's like I said, it's close to $3 million and uh, that's big money, no matter which way you put it. So 
thank you very much. And next person. Commissioner Marks. Uh, yes, to address uh, Mrs. Fennell's second question. Uh, today was a pretty serious day in Whitehall. I went down to the fire scene on Pennsylvania after the fire and I talked to Chief Nelson. I'm sure everybody reviewed his monthly report and we have to have a serious conversation about our firefighting status in Whitehall Township. I'm very concerned at what took place today. It's not for a lack of doing, it's just for a lack of volunteerism and people being able to get out during routine working hours. And uh, we are undermanned and it's an uphill battle. I'm concerned Chief Nelson and uh, Assistant Chief Builder went into that fire today without any backup. There were a couple of police officers present. I'm afraid and I'm concerned that potentially we could have a loss of life with either firefighters or our citizens. So we need to sit down, have a serious conversation about the status of firefighting in Whitehall Township and what needs to take place in the future. Because uh, I think it's unacceptable that, you know, we sit back and do nothing. And I'm not saying that anyone would wanna do that, but I think we really need to sit down and have a serious conversation of what we're gonna do moving forward for the uh, safety of our citizens. So I don't know, Mayor, I recommend we create a committee. I don't know who would partake on that committee, but we need to seriously sit down and figure out how we can get some manpower on the street Monday through Friday during normal working hours to offset and give these people some support because, you know, I, I don't know what the answers are, but we seriously need to get more bodies on the ground because if something bad happens, they're going to need help. Uh, Joe, I've met with the uh, the mayors of Caddy and North Caddy. Um, Caddy has a, a pretty good turnout, and we're trying to get to the point where we can formulate a uh, a plan that's going to allow us to have a, a much more efficient, effective, and quicker response uh, out of all of us. Um, Catasauqua actually has uh, a substantial uh, level of, of younger volunteers at this point. Um, we, we've uh, tried to uh, duplicate that, but that was notwithstanding, um, we, we believe we're going to be able to organize uh, a response team that will make all of us safer, but frankly, at this point, um, will we'll help Whitehall Township quite a bit. All right, we, we just need to get the ball rolling. I mean, we, I know we've discussed this for a number of years, but I think we're at critical mass right now. What I discussed with the chief this afternoon concerns me. It was heroic on his part, you know, assistant chief builders part and all of our firefighters, but there, there wasn't a lot of participation and had there been an entrapment or had, you know, Chief Nelson and Chief Builder got gotten trapped today. There wouldn't have been anyone there to, you know, help them. And I, I, I think it's gotten to a point where, you know, I honor our volunteers and I honor our, our our people that serve. But you know, everyone has busy lives and responsibilities. And I think we've come to a point in society where, moving forward, we're going to have to man up and take this by the reins and and, and do the responsible thing because. Honestly, I mean, I was very disappointed to hear, you know, the number of people that came out for this fire today, no fault of their own. I mean, if they're not available, they're not available. You know, they did a mutual aid call and there was some success there, but the, the timelines were long. And had we had an entrapment, children, elderly in that fire, and fortunately we didn't, uh, we, we would have had a loss of life today. And I, I think it's it's our responsibility to make sure that those people have the support that they need. And uh, I, I know we've discussed this in the past. I think that we're at a critical mass and we need to, we need to move forward. We need to get some more people for them and some more support. 
And that's all I got. Thanks. It, Joe, I can just say you're right. No question. Well, then I, I think it's time to form a committee or maybe a committee is not the answer, but we need to discuss the next steps. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know something needs to happen because something, you know, I, I mean, you can only ask people to do so much. And we've had a couple major events recently where these people are tired, frustrated, and, you know, they want to go home to their families too. And I, I know I'm beating the same drum here, but I, I think we really need to sit down and talk about this and do something. Mayor, maybe by next month or maybe sooner, do you think we can have some some type of uh, round table and whatever you need out of the Board of Commissioners to ask for? Uh, well, I, uh, what are you asking me, Phil? I'm, I'm just, I'm not asking, I'm offering whatever you need from the Board of Commissioners. Oh, okay. To, to put this together, I, you know, let, let us know and sooner than, than better whenever you can. Well, uh, yeah, uh, we can, we can, uh, and, and if anybody on the board is interested in sitting in, uh, on a meeting with, uh, with us, that'd be fine with me, but Dave and I, uh, Dave particularly has been working very, very hard on this. Uh, um, so yes, um, we'll, uh, we'll be able to give you information before the end of, well, before the next meeting for sure. If, if there's meetings for this, I, I would be more than happy to sit in with you and Chief Nelson on this. Okay. Uh, just let me know and I'll, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. This is, this is the toughest problem we're going to have for a while. So Without a question and one of the most expensive. Yep. Yeah. All right. Moving forward under mine. Uh, I had asked Jack Myers to kind of, if he had time to put together a, a financial status report of, of how we look from the first half of this year, you know, not knowing where we started or where we were going to end up with COVID and everything else. And, and uh, is Jack on? Yes, I am. Do, uh, do you have the ability to speak to this or, or were you short of time? Well, I'd like to see what the month of June finishes up with and it's something for your July meeting. That's that that's fine. Uh and, and I appreciate that you time short today. Uh but but it would be nice to kind of know where we're at at the half half year mark. We'll do thanks Jack. Uh Mayor, are, did we get anywhere with the Hall Road Reliance Street agreement? Uh we have exchanged we have exchanged the uh, agreements um right now um i would rather have jack gross uh speak to that situation sure um i as the mayor said the agreement was drafted uh, it's been back and forth with uh with the owner's attorney several times at this point i'm continuing Continuing to work on it does not uh, slipped uh, slipped. It's just uh, getting it done. Unfortunately, because it was uh, a few years ago, uh, there's just uh, some. Uh, I, I I don't want to say controversy, but some disagreement around the edges of what was uh, what was agreed during that conditional use hearing. But it, it will get done, and I expect it to be done before your next meeting. Okay. And and when I say done, it'll be done between the lawyers. The agreement will um, will need to come to the to the mayor and to the board for review before it's signed. Okay. Uh, Frank Clark, Lehigh Avenue repairs. The signs are going up tomorrow for the detour, which is going to be a total closure of South Lehigh. Uh, that those signs will advise motorists that. As of Monday, the 21st, that road will be closed. So we have to provide enough time for the, uh, the detour to get noticed. And then from that point on, we go. 
UGI is going to make things better as far as uh, going to be taking care of a gas line that's in there now. They're going to probably cap it off. It won't interrupt anybody's service, but it'll be less involved for the for the construction. So we're trying to coordinate with their engineering office on that one. But uh, as of Monday, that as of Monday the twenty first, that road will be closed. Okay. Uh, in case anybody's wondering, the the six foot storm pipe south of Route twenty two. I don't believe we could talk about. I believe there is uh, some legal wrangling going on there. If I'm correct with that. Uh, that's fair enough. Uh, right now, it's progressing smoothly and quietly. Um, those involved with it are, are seem to be very satisfied. And hopefully, by uh, the July meeting, we'll be able to bring you up to speed on everything. So um, we're working through that. All parties are cooperating. And uh, we're, we're hopeful that we'll have something uh, put together by next month. All right. Thanks, Frank. Uh, I've been asked by some of the commissioners uh, thoughts on getting back to meeting in person. Uh, and I did have a conversation with Mayor Herrick on this. Uh, one of the problems we have is we can't use the school district meeting room because they meet the same night we do, uh, Mayor Herrick will mention. Uh, so, you know, we looked at the SOAR authority. Will that room be big enough for us? So we're, we're, we're kind of going to try and get through the summer with what we're doing now with video and look at this towards towards uh, September and see where we're at and how close we are and to, to getting into the building one way or the other and make a decision from there. Uh, does anybody have any comments they want to make on on, on, on on that issue? There being none, I would like to ask to go to legal and legislation. The thought of all grant information, copies of applications to the Board of Commission, what grants are applied for, matching funds needed, timelines, what grants are available, and who wrote the grant. I would like to come out of legal and legislative with a procedure for this to be followed that the board, each member of the, of the board, has a copy of what grants applied for and, and all the information on that grant. And I would ask for the backing of this board to be able to go to legal legislation, legal and legislative and draw that up that we can get that information monthly to, to the board of commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Marks, you're the president of legal and legislative. Uh, I'm going to send this over to you. How do we go about this? Well, we. <laughs> I guess we have to deal with the administration and find out exactly what grants are being applied for, what they're being used for, and and what the, how they're going to be applied. So, all right. Let me ask it this way: and Attorney Gross, help me because I do not have a motion to do this in front of me. Can I ask for permission from the Board of Commissioners to take this thought to legal and legislative to see if there's any interest in it? And can I do it by, is there anybody opposed to this? Can I do it that way, Attorney Gross? Yes, there's, uh, you know, you can, you can certainly by consensus uh, ask legal and legislative to, to look at it. Obviously any recommendation from LNL would have to come back to the board for approval. Everything would have to come back to the board for approval. I, I just wish to look at it and see if that's where the board would like to go in the future to clear some of this up a little bit every time there's Something with a grant thrown at us. Uh, how does the board feel about this? Is anybody against it? Um, I guess I would I would ask the question when we when we go to the resolution to support the grant, we discuss what the grants for. Um, like the police station, when I wrote the itemization for the RCAP to get the one million dollars, I didn't go to the board of commissioners for approval. I did it on my own. We got it in the queue through the appropriations bill. And then we submitted our cap. It didn't go through a committee. We spoke about it at the board meeting and we got the right folks involved to apply for it. We landed a million dollars. A million dollars that the the board did not spearhead. That's because we didn't know about doing anything like that. It, 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 right. it was kept a big secret. It was not I mean, kept I mean, a big I mean, secret. Everybody wants to do their own little thing for grants. That's my point. 
And and I want, to make, I want to make that open to the whole township, how it works, what's available, the timelines, what's it going to cost? And instead of this, this, everybody's running around and nobody knows what each other's doing. I'm not, I'm not backtracking on anybody that's willing to take the time and write that grant and do that type of thing. But, but the other one is the board should have the information. Right. As right. To what's May going on and, and before voting night. Um, Mayor, I think you sent out an email after that grant was submitted, but I, 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 I'm not sure if it was that grant or another grant, but you provided grant details to the board. I, I, I would, I would suggest Jeff, if you're asking me to provide input. I think it's a, a wholly reasonable suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think, I guess, really just to give my two cents, I mean, I think, you know, commissioners and whatnot should be permitted and be allowed to, you know, you know, take their own initiatives and do grants. However, I do agree with President Ginder that I think there needs to be a streamlined process that at least everybody knows what's going on. Well, yeah, I agree, Chuck. And where we where, how where we got to this point is there was nobody spearheading it, nobody. And so I identified these grants um, through the need of projects that I supported and went after it. So I, I don't think there was any behind the scenes dealings here. We we voted on it in the board meeting. We discussed it. Um, I'm, the mayor I'm, provided. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. You were talking. No, I, I just uh, the mayor provided reports to the board. Um, throughout the process, um, and through email, and I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I if we can send a copy of the grant that was supplied for, it. but um, I can tell you this, um, you don't always get the entire grant the first time around. Pavilion grant is one thing. There was opposition to the pavilion, and we're working on our fourth opportunity that would cover the cost of the entire thing. We didn't get it the first time, but I, you know, I just think that. We do have we have spending programs that nobody goes out and get a grants for and they get rubber stamped. And then here we have an opportunity where we're getting some support from the state. We're getting support from our legislators and state senators. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like the there's 2 projects that got a lot of pushback and those were ones that got great. We got grants for. My comment was not about anything going on behind the scenes. My comment is about. As president of the board of commissioners, that the board of commissioners have each, and I mean each, but it's, it's seven commissioners. They each have full information as to what is going on, what is available, and how the process works. I agree. And that that that's my comment here to get into legislative and, and figure out a process to do this, and 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 move forward that that we don't have this. Now, over the past, as I've sat on the board over the years, the grants fully came out of the administration. Now, there weren't as many grants then as there are now, at least it doesn't seem so that in, in that direction. But, uh, you know, un unless you have an in on these grants, you, you don't know what's going on. I worked construction my whole life, and when I worked full time, I had no idea what grants were available and what weren't. Uh, and, and I think this information has to come forward now that, that each member of this board knows what's going on and understands it. Was anybody against taking this to LNL? No, then I'm going to take it. We're going to move forward to LNL and, and try and come up with some type of program that, that each commissioner knows what's going on with this. And I thank everybody for their support to be able to do that and, and get to the end of this. Uh, the treasurer's not here, so I cannot comment on any of that. Uh, Mayor Harrickle, the list of park and playground officers and are their financials complete? Where are we at with that? Uh, I asked Tony to get them. I did not collect them. Um, I will do my best to have that to you tomorrow. Because that's also information that the board, each board, each commissioner should have. Uh, at, and at, you at, mentioned that last month, and I I agreed, and I didn't get it done. My apologies. Know, this this is not me. This is as president of this board. I'm looking to get this board of commissioners the information that they need to know what's going on in the township. Phil, I'm I'm agreeing with you. I I know um, you are. It, it's okay. just my point. I I don't want anybody to think I'm pushing anything personal here because I'm not. I I want this board and every member of this board. To have the information they should have. Uh, 
the last thing I have, Mayor, are you going to talk about the recycle event in, in your report? Um, yes. Okay. But then you I'm can not do it now, talk. Phil. It's not, it's not a big deal. I mean, okay. um, if you want, I'll, I'll talk about it. I, 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 I would appreciate if you would. Uh, okay. That's all I have. And thank you. Now it's for, for the mayor's report. Okay, uh, before I, I give you my report, um, I <laughs> I don't know how to do this so that it makes any sense, but um, I, I missed uh, an opportunity to uh, meet at the Hockey Legion with uh, representatives from the area uh, for a flag burning, uh, it, it's a sacred event. Um, I committed to doing that. Um, I talked with Phil about it, I think the same day or day before, and I don't know what in the world happened to me, but I completely lost track of that. I missed the ceremony and, uh, I can only apologize and, uh, there, there's no excuse for it. Um, I'll say that I haven't been sleeping well since then, um, but I, I want to uh, apologize not just to the to the hockey legion, um, but but everyone who ever served the country deserves to have uh, better than I performed um, in, in in missing that event, and uh, I, I just hope at some point. Uh, I can make up for it in some way. Um, I, I, I've felt humiliated about that. Um, but it, it's not about me. It's about the, the flag ceremony. And I just, uh, I missed. Uh, and I'll, I'll take whatever anybody wants to, uh, to throw at me. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll deal with it. Um, but. I apologize profusely. Um, moving on. Uh, the uh, recycling event is June 26th. We've been advertising it uh, on our website regularly, um, on our uh, Facebook page, and uh, the uh, Environmental Advisory Council uh, generally runs this. Um, because we are where we are in the process of construction on this site, uh, we are going to be holding this at the middle school, uh, at the back of the middle school. We will approach the event from MacArthur Road, uh, pull into Campus Drive, and then take the uh, the left to go to the back of the uh, of the middle school. Um, we have the list of things that we're going to collect uh, and any uh, that we have uh, fees to accumulate or to, to, uh, to get um, are also noted on there. It's a very comprehensive thing. We'll also be doing the, uh, the shredding event. Um, we'll have lanes identified. We have volunteers. Uh, and if there are any other folks who wish to volunteer, we'll, we'll take anybody who's interested. Um, beyond that, uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a much bigger event because we've put it off since last year. Uh, so we have two years worth of televisions and electronics and shredding that I'm sure people are going to want to have done. Uh, it's an event that we've been doing for quite a long time. And I'm glad we're having it back. Um, so, uh, in, unless there's some other information that the board wants that I can provide you right now, uh, most of what you're going to be uh, uh, be reporting and and providing uh, is free. Um, you're going to be able to get larger items, uh, appliances, televisions, that kind of thing, uh, for a fee. Um, Phil, you need any other information than that? What time are the volunteers meeting? Uh, the volunteers will be there at 8 to 8.30. Okay. 
And will there be, do we need yellow vests for, for all the volunteers? Uh, we do have vests, I believe. Um, I, I believe that's where we are. I believe we have vests. Okay, 8 to 8.30, and this is rain or shine. Right. Okay, that was my goal, uh, main question to find out what time anybody who wanted to help could be there. That's the only question I had, thanks. Okay, um, beyond that, um, I can provide some information that I know you're interested in. Um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, about litter, and I'll begin with that. I met with uh, the manager, the Walmart manager, um, and we had a, a good conversation about uh, the problems that are being generated on his site end. Uh, surprisingly to me, um, as we uh, talked, he told me that he had bought a number of backpack uh, vacuums and that he had already at that point had them on the backs of his employees daily, picking them up and emptying them. And uh, I have to admit that since I, I had that meeting, um, and he having made the decision earlier to to have those backpacks, I'm seeing uh, an improvement there. Um, and they they seem to be accepting their responsibility. Um, there are other areas that uh, that are being cleaned up too. The EAC has been involved. And uh, I, Chuck mentioned the one. Um, I uh, have a, a letter underway to the uh, corporate headquarters of Home Depot. They're just not meeting their responsibilities down there. Um, way too much, even, even uh, within a, a week or so of doing the cleanup down there, it began to get pretty, pretty bad. So um, we're, we need to get uh, more effort put in. I need to get more responsibility and uh, commitment from the retail world. Um, we have to get this done because their livelihood and our community depends upon us doing a better job with the litter. We're getting there. Um, also, you might remember that we had a uh, an encampment on a regular basis at the uh, um, at the park, and uh, I met with uh, Chris Holub and Frank Ruiz, who's the commander commanding officer of the Union Volunteers, uh, they asked about doing this project again um, because the COVID snuck up, us, well, didn't snuck, sneak up on us. It, it hit us in the head again. Uh, they had decided not to do it again, but they asked if they could get together with a few key people uh, and camp out, and they did, in fact, uh, do that last weekend. Um, and they are committed to doing that program again. They uh, are hoping they can do it on April 29th, 30th, and May 1st. And we'd like to see that happen again. Um, I sat in on a webinar uh, envisioning a just future in community forests uh, sponsored by Penn State. They help between 400 and 600 communities a year. Uh, to plant and care for trees, and I want to get us hooked into that. I think it's an important project that we can undertake uh, with just a little bit of money. Um, we had a, a ribbon cutting ceremony for Keystone Harley Davidson. Uh, any of you who uh, uh, looking for a, a Harley, uh, it's it's amazing what they have in there. Uh, we hired a uh, codes inspector and a tax office clerk, clerk one, uh, Derek Woodis uh, is the new codes inspector and Andrea Judge has the new uh, clerk one position in the tax office. Um, the uh, things are still moving on Route 329. Uh, we had a meeting involving to a great extent um, how we're going to go about lighting and what kind of uh, what kind of contract we're going to put together. It's going to involve Northampton and Whitehall and Northampton and Lehigh County. And uh, I, I think uh, we'll have that together for the board uh, in plenty of time to move that along. 
Um, also attended a, a meeting with the people who are going to ultimately get the the uh, contracts, do the utility work there, um, and got some information um, about the potential movement of of the uh, poles there uh, upon which we have lighting. Um, the, also, you should know the uh, crossing of the future DNL trail is going to be at least right now uh, as part of that project at grade. And uh, that's something that's still being worked on actively within the community. Uh, we had a state of the region event with the Chamber of Commerce uh, last month with uh, representatives from Copley, North Catasauqua and Catasauqua and had a, had a good event there. Uh, everybody's uh, hoping to come out from underneath the COVID and things are beginning to, to happen. A um, couple other things here, but uh, I don't need to, to, bela to belabor that. Um, if there are any other questions, uh, I'm glad to answer any questions. If not, um, uh, I, I'm uh, ready to move on. Any questions for the mayor? Okay, there are none. Uh, the treasurer uh, called me earlier. She could not be here tonight. So there will be no treasurer's report. Uh, anything else anybody has to wish to bring forward? Uh, Phil, can I just interrupt for a sure. moment or in yep. interject something here? Um, I, I believe she sent out uh, a report that uh, that you should have gotten yesterday. Um, and uh, so I know you can't uh, talk to her about that, but I, I thought she had gotten that out to you. Yeah, the first report came out, but you couldn't download it. And then she sent a second report out today that you could download the the, the normal report we got. Okay. Anybody have anything else for the evening? Yes, President Ginder. Yes. Uh, can I mention one thing I forgot to put in my commissioner's report? You absolutely may. Thank you, sir. I do believe that today the senior center reopened down at the West County playground. Um, I did not get a chance to get down there. I was short staffed in the office today. Um, they're usually open Tuesday through Friday, but I do believe that um, they reopened today, which is great news. Uh, we have a place now where seniors can come back to. Uh, if, you, if there's any senior out there who has not been down there, they offer lunch at 1130. It's usually open 9 a.m. to 2. They offer uh, chair yoga, um, seated strength training, uh, bingo. I don't know uh, if they're up and running with all their programs yet, but I'm going to stop by tomorrow to uh, to stop in and say hi. But I just wanted to mention that, that uh, that's great news. So our seniors probably more importantly have friendship and companionship down there. Um, it, it, it's a great thing for our seniors to do. So I just wanted to mention that hopefully it did open today. So thank you. No, thank you, Mick. I didn't know it reopened today. That's that's uh, that's a good piece of information. Thanks. Yeah, Mick. It, it was supposed to, but I can't, I didn't get okay. a chance to get down there. So I don't want to guarantee it, but they were scheduled to, to reopen today. So. Good things are reopening. That's what we want. Absolutely. All right. If there's no other comments on anything, motion to adjourn. I'll make it, Fisher. Do I have a second? I'll second, D. We have a second. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night.